As many of you might know, I'm bigger on inspiration than motivation. I believe an inspiration and an inspirational speaker versus a motivational speaker really gets you off your butt. Now, I know that most people think, well, a motivational speaker gets you off your butt. But, you know, I, I, I've been to these type of events and I've talked to other people who have been to these type of events with quote unquote motivational speakers and they get you all, all riled up for three days and you go home and everything's great. And most people, not all the people, of course, but too many people within a few days or a week, that whole rah, rah motivational um, experience they had over the weekend gets lost in paying the bills, in reading the news again, in just going through life. So I believe that giving an inspirational talk or being an inspirational, uh, having an ins inspirational experience is much more powerful and more deeply than motivates you to take action because you are inspired. I believe you need to be inspired before you are motivated to take action. Now, why am I telling you this? Because really, no matter whether you get inspired or motivated or what order that comes in, one or more of the six human needs, as it's called, is what's truly going to move you. If that idea that you are inspired or motivated <clears throat> by has some, some connection to one of the six human needs that we all have, that's what's going to fuel the fire within you. Okay, and we'll get into that a little more. So what are these six human needs? Excuse me, I gotta push a button. So the first one is certainty. Okay, certainty is one of the six human needs. The next one is uncertainty or variety. Number two. Number three is significance. Number four, connection and love. Number five is growth. And the sixth human need that we all share is contribution. Okay. Now, according to psychologist Chloe Madonis, our behavior is motivated by the prior to prioritization of one or more of these six needs. These needs in the order that we have decided to prioritize them. And that varies from person to person. Not everybody um, has, you know, number four as significant versus number two. These needs go beyond any desires or wants that we have. Okay, this is deep-seated core stuff. And the two most dominant of the needs that we employ individually will determine the choices that we make and the action or actions that we take. They are the underlying drivers for achievement. One or more of these six human needs. So let's get into them, okay? Let's, let's dive in. So, first of all, are you most fueled by certainty in your life. Now, what is certainty in your life? That's an assurance that you can avoid pain and gain pleasure, okay? So do words like comfort, security, safety, stability, feeling grounded, um, predictability, and protection have the greatest meaning to you. Certainty has to do with beliefs, what you perceive, what you believe, what you what you believe you achieve, create, make a reality in your life. Do you have certainty about the divine and the universal law? That which we talk about every week? That, that this 
This power, this energy works for you, lives in you, and powers you, has unconditional love for you. That certainty gives you comfort and keeps you grounded, no matter what's happening around you. Certainty. Or maybe it's the excitement of uncertainty and variety in your life that lights the flame. The need for the unknown, change, spontaneity, suspense, surprise, any kind of stimuli like that. But you know, uncertainty and even variety sometimes comes with instability, chaos, conflict, or crisis. Now, of course, most people, if not all people, don't like that aspect of uh, having that human need of uncertainty and variety, but you can have both at the same time. When we choose to look at the ups and downs as life, of life as, as pleasant surprises that create challenges sometimes, rather than choosing to be the victim of those pleasant surprises, our need to tap into that childlike innocence that loves the idea of a great surprise can be exhilarating and enhance your manif manifestation skills. But that's if we remember to also look at the challenges that may show up as a lesson instead of, and, and something to be the victor of versus the victim of. Uncertainty, variety. Could it be that having significance in your community or even the world is what floats your boat? But the feeling of being unique, important, special, or needed with achievement and performance in the forefront can also come with the idea of being prideful, having lower standards, being uber perfectionist, being someone who is constantly self-evaluating in a victim-y sort of way, in a, a shame-blame-guilt sort of way. Having so much discipline, there's so little fun. Being in constant competition and, and thus inviting the possibility or the, the increased possibility of rejection. And rejection is one thing and can be a positive thing in a lot of ways if you have the perspective that for every rejection you get, you're closer to the yes. For every no you receive, no matter what, what part of your life you're talking about, is that much closer to the yes. Well, if you think that way, then rejection might not be such a horrible thing. But some people find their significance in being noticed because of their woe is me personality. That can make you significant in a party, in a community, in a group of friends. Being the one in the room with the biggest problems can become a competition even. You may be eager to win and thus become significant because you won the competition of having the biggest problems. However, staying grounded and centered through our or a spiritual practice, and maybe some counseling or therapy might have to jump in now and again, that keeps that aspect of significance, that woe is me, that aspect, that I have the biggest and loudest problem in the room aspect at bay, and can help you take your life back to a positive outlook. That doesn't mean uh, uh, negative conditions may not show up. They'll probably show up, but no matter the condition that shows up, we'll know that we can focus on what we're going to learn, how we're going to avoid that condition, what actions we're going to take to resolve that condition. Now, maybe it's connection and love. Is it possibly connection and love is the greatest catalyst for your thoughts, beliefs, and actions? Is a strong feeling of closeness or union with someone or something along with ideas of to get togetherness, passion, warmth, tenderness, desire? Is that the core of every decision you make? 
When we experience being in love, and it matters not whether this is romantic love or familial love or self-love or love about what you do in life, whenever that happens, whenever that feeling is occurring or the emotion from that is occurring, our brain fires off the old oxytocin and dopamine, which of course then creates a surge of positive emotions. And then, you know, we love that feeling. We love that feeling and we bring back that feeling and our body loves that feeling. Our body can crave that feeling. It shows when those uh, neurotransmitters happen, it shows that even our bodies are consistently calling out for love and connection in its most primal form, which is hormones working, or like I said, neurotransmitters firing off. So that's connection, that's love. Is that your big, big need of the six needs? Can it be growth that inflames your every move? An expansion of capacity or capability or understanding? There's a famous psychologist, Abraham Maslow, who quipped, you will either step forward into growth or you will step backward into safety. Does that happen to you? It's happened to me once or twice, at least, I think, where there is an opportunity for growth, an opportunity for expansion, and it kind of freaks, freaks you out. And so you go back into safety. Does that happen? Or is it expansion that you want? Is it growth that you want? Maybe it's contribution contribution, your contribution to the world, your contribution to history, your, your contribution to your community. Is that your guidepost to your greatness? A sense of service and focus on helping and giving and supporting others? Certainty, significance, and uncertainty are needs of the body. Adding love to those first three Makes, the, makes, makes it a foursome, and that becomes the needs of personality. That is what is required for human survival, is to have some certainty, have some significance, and have some uncertainty in our lives, all surrounded with love. That's required for human survival. That is part of each of our personalities. Now, growth and contribution are needs of the spirit the spirit that supports everything in our lives. It's essential for our fulfillment, for all human fulfillment. And you add love to this, you add love to growth and contribution, and you usually have included those first three. Your mission in life choice, the mission you have decided is what's going to be for your life. Write it down as a statement. It describes how your purpose and vision are going to show up in your life. It is the action that is fueled by the passion you have and the most significant needs that are present in your life. The Coca-Cola company may seem to have a mission to sell you soft drinks and the like, but this is their mission statement. It's a fabulous mission statement. To refresh the world in mind, body, and spirit, to inspire moments of optimism and happiness through our brands and actions. Wow, it's powerful, powerful. Zappos sells shoes, but their mission statement claims to provide the best customer service possible, deliver wow through service. They're not selling shoes, they're selling customer service. That is the action they take in their company. REI, REI sells camping uh, equipment and supplies. However, their mission is all about belief. Listen to this. At Recreational Equipment Incorporated, REI, we believe a life outdoors is a life well lived. We believe that it's in the wild, untamed, and natural places that we find our best selves. 
So our purpose is to awaken a lifelong love of the outdoors for all. <laughs> Powerful. Powerful. Barely anything about selling camping equipment. A hint at it because they're talking about being outdoors, being in natural places, being in the wild and untamed part of natural places. The love of outdoors. But it's so much more. It's so much deeper. We're selling um, a well-lived life in nature, REI is saying. That's so powerful. That's so wonderful. What about you? What about me, for that instance? What do you believe? What are you selling? Not necessarily to the outside, but what are you selling to yourself? What are your needs? I want to remind you, I want to encourage you, I want to invite you to not stand outside the fire. Get in it. Let it fuel you. Let it warm you. Let it light you up. And if you get overwhelmed by it, well, there's ways around that too. Well, I think I'm going to talk about that a little more next week. But in this month of being on a mission and beyond, Remember, you are the fuel for the fire. You are the power of the pyre. <laughs> you are the combustion for the construction. You electrify the mind's eye. You, you and your mind, body, spirit, and your heart, and the imagination and intuition of your gut, and the feelings that you have knowing by touch and sight and sound and smell and even taste what it is you want to experience in your life. You can experience, you can envision those senses of that idea of that thing or even of that idea. Yeah, a car. What does a car taste like? What does peace of mind sound like? Using the six human needs as your guidepost. Discover what influences the actions you take. And apply that to the, your mission statement. One more time, let me go over these six um, human needs. One, certainty. Two, uncertainty variety. Three, significance. Four, connection and love. Five, growth. Six, contribution. That's all of them. My friends, you are the illumination for the demonstration of your desires. Let me say that again. I know it sounds a little clever, but listen, you are the illumination for the demonstration of your desires. So strike the match. Start your engines. Turn on the juice of you. You have to intentionally be the fuel for the fire. And when you are, watch your life grow and expand, contributing to the world with certainty and the fun of variety. All that encompassed with love connection, and significance. Thank you so much. Namaste.